What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out Ragtag Crew. This is a game where you take a party of post-apocalyptic bandits and try to survive for as long as possible while going through events, taking fights, gathering gear, leveling up, all that kind of fun stuff. So we're going to dive on in, give it about 25-30 minutes today and see if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list or otherwise pass on. This is a limited demo that was sent out for playtesting. And like the previous edition, I got it like a month or two ago, but it didn't have any of the sound or any of the music implemented yet, so I kind of wanted to wait uh, until the playtest was a little bit more complete before I showed it off. And that day is now here. So anyways, the link's down below if you wanted to wishlist the game for yourself. I'll also have links to my Discord, you know, my Twitch stream, all that kind of fun stuff. I am live most days of the week, but let's not waste any more time talking. Let's get to playing. Uh, yeah, we can start a tutorial. Why not? Let's go do it. Hey, we won that map fair and square. You better hand it over. Fair and square, you cheated. It was fair cheating. I guess we'll have to do this the hard way. All right, so we've got to apparently encourage people. We've got the encourage ability on a rifleman back here. It looks like he gives accuracy 100% and plus two ability power on their next action. Okay, we'll throw that out there. Looks good. Enemy's attentions for the next turn. Okay, so they're both going to attack for four damage right there. It looks like this guy deals four damage, but he skips a turn if he takes four or more in one attack. So he's kind of fragile. All right. So we click on her. We've got her sneak attack right here, which has 95% accuracy. Deals four damage plus one if nobody's targeting you. Gotcha. All right. Well, let's knife him on up. That'll show him. I mean, our boy still got shot in the face. Tools are powerful in single use. Go ahead and activate the nano machines to get your veteran back into the fray. All right, get back up, bro. I heal you with the power of robotic goodness. Uh, he's going to use suppressive fire over here. Two, three damage to an enemy and lower their attack damage by two until the end of the turn. Gotcha. Why wouldn't we just finish off that guy right there? Oh, because we're going to do it with her. Gotcha. All right, so there's one down right there. Actually, the sound effects sound really, really good. I like the sound of the gunshots and the impacts. All right, so we're going to go for crit and pray for sweet, sweet damage. There it is. All right, so every time we win, somebody can improve one of their abilities. We've got finishing blow. Exhaust all of your abilities to deal four to five damage to an enemy. We've got war of attrition. Deal one to two enemy or damage to an enemy row and give them life loss one. Or we've got Taunt. Provoke an enemy and lower their attack damage by three until the end of turn. I'm going to go with the AoE. That sounds good. The game of dice didn't go so great. The pub is thrashed. Gomb is knocked out. Your gambling opponents didn't appreciate your art of semi-cheating. But nobody is around to question the legitimacy of your victory anymore, so you grab the fair winnings. An old map of who knows where. Actually, you also deserve reimbursements for the emotional damage. Who in the world starts a brawl over losing a worn-out piece of paper anyways? Somebody who won't need a fancy glove anymore. That's who. So we got ourselves a power glove right there. Nice. And since you've crossed the moral boundary now anyways, you might as well loot the pub itself for good measure. It was their job to ensure gambling winnings were paid after all. You grab some rations because food is going to be crucial. You'll spend it to move around and eat a lot while resting. Food is crucial, but it ain't sparkling, unlike that power glove. It can increase my ability power and make me a hard hitter, so I think I'll grab it for myself. Fine by you? Yeah, don't talk. It was a rhetorical question. All right, so we got to equip the glove. So there you go. We have equipped the glove. Skills are used in events to overcome your challenges. Upon failure, they will learn from their mistake and improve the skill. Morale affects accuracy in combat. Sad and annoyed people find it hard to focus, so keep them happy. All right. Does it say, where's the ability power at? Like, because we saw that go plus one, right? Does that mean it just adds, like, plus one to, let's see here. So three plus one. I think we just got to keep mental tabs of it. It doesn't look like there's actually a bubble for, like, ability power. So we just have to kind of be aware of it right here. It says ability power will affect the damage dealt. I don't know. It doesn't look like it updated the tooltip, but it's hard to tell. We'll have to try it out the next time we go into combat and see what happens. You hear chattering outside. It seems like your opponents had friends. With all that reek, who could have guessed? You're about to have company and Gomda's still out, so we might want to scuttle. Yeah, let's go break out the back door. Uh, we'll have Sarah do it. She has athletics. Sarah kicks the kitchen barn door open and bam, you're gone. You can't just drag Gomda around. I mean, you can, but it's not going to be efficient. It's time to recuperate and consider your situation. All right, so it looks like we can camp for a little bit. 
There's no ailment that can't be healed by stuffing one's face full of delicious meat. Things are looking up. Now that the map costs you so much bruising, what is it anyways? Let me see. The paper's kind of odd. The map itself shows a cross on the other side of the desert marked the place. Location's reasonably specific, but that's about it. Oh good, a mysterious map leading to some sort of treasure. A key that unlocks a thrilling once-in-a-lifetime adventure. Clearly there's only one thing that we can do about that. Uh, sell it to some adventure-seeking suckers and call it a day? Sell it to some adventure-seeking suckers and call it a day. Let's go. We'll probably find the right kind of simpletons in a village nearby. Alright. You arrive at a bustling village, a sort of crossroads where all kinds of people might mingle. It doesn't take long to draw the attention of inexperienced scavengers. You pitch them the map, claiming it leads to an old adventurer's hidden cache stuffed with zin creds and tre treasure. The naive suckers buy the lie and the map. You pocket the money and go to the nearest pub. The rest of the game is going to be dedicated to the journey of the naive suckers. Yup, it's that kind of adventure. Oh, really? I thought we were playing those other three. Oh, man. But it looks like their archetype is still here. Okay. So we've got four characters as of right now. These guys aren't available in the preview for the playtest. But it looks like we've got Alice. So what is Alice? A member of the Technomancer Guild who has outstayed her welcome in the community for unclear reasons. Uses her numerous artifacts to cover allies with four shields of fine enemy vulnerabilities. Okay. Then we've got a former scavenger who's gone rusty but wants to give the desert one last go. He's seen some shit and wants to forget it. Controls the battlefield with helpful commands and suppressive fire. We also have Rogue, a former gang member who didn't leave on good terms. You can bet that she holds a grudge. And then we have the Savage, a former Bristlebirds tribeman, now somewhat civilized. Wonder how he got the scars? Trust me, you don't. Still uses old techniques in a fight, taunting enemies and throwing boomerangs. Okay. Do I get to adjust anything about the character creation? Oh, I do. Okay, so we can pick kind of what their stats go into. So we can have a charming smooth talker who likes attention. We've got the hermit. He's a pacifist who travels with a giant lizard and hates fighting. Okay. I don't... It seems like this is going to have a lot of fighting. So, like, I'm kind of thinking that might not work out so great. We'll probably go with Daredevil then for him because, like, he's obviously, like, the physical melee guy. Uh, I want to take the gunman. That sounds sick. So I want the rifle guy. The real question to me is, like, do I want to bring the Technomancer or the Rogue? I guess we'll probably stick with, like, the defaults. So he's smart and arrogant and knows things and won't hesitate to share the knowledge after he's done laughing at your stupidity. We'll make him the eye catcher. There we go. And then I guess we'll take her. Let's see, avoids combat at all costs, unnecessary fights, damage, morale. Okay. I mean, we do have a giant dog turtle. I mean, having a giant dog turtle sounds pretty. I'm going to call it the Tog from now on. We've got a Tog, bro. Yeah, we'll go with that right there. Apparently, she's tired of violence, even though she has skulls on her shoulder pads. She's very confused about being a wasteland brigand. Every adventure's got a beginning. Yours was buying a map that leads to a cache somewhere in the desert. Supposedly, it holds immense riches, and that's it. That's the motivation for the journey. Probably wouldn't sound noble to some people, but those people never lived in poverty. All right, on we go. Hey, are those the local savages over there by the dunes? Let's strike first. And I'm not just saying this for the sake of wanton bloodshed. I know from experience here that the tribes are particularly territorial. Either we gotta hit them or they're gonna hit us. We hit them, of course, and I am saying this for the sake of wanton bloodshed. No, it's never us or them. Life is not a zero-sum game. It's been scientifically proven that in most situations, both sides can help each other and benefit from them. Let's talk to them and see what they want. Turns out they wanted to throw a spear at Sarah's face. She loses four health. <laughs> okay, so we've got some damage going out. That's not, like, ideal. It looks like everything's going to him for right now. So we got the Bristlebird Challenge. We could provoke an enemy and get one armor till the end of turn. Yeah, go ahead and provoke that one so, like, all targets are on you. And then over here, what do these guys do? These targets enemies with the highest health. Okay, so that's not going to, like, work for a long, long time. Uh, we've got three damage right there that we can throw out. Let's get rid of one of these dudes right there. That's perfect. That takes care of business. Uh, this dude apparently just gets to attack for two damage, so I'm fine with that. Go get him, Tog. And then we got a dog over here, so we've got Encourage, two Ability Power, or we can do Suppressive Fire, which will lower their attack damage. Yeah, let's do that. 
So there's two damage right there, eaten by shield, and there's zero damage right there. Honestly, one of the better ways that that fight could have possibly gone in the first place. So that ability's locked down. It looks like we've got a basic attack over here. Oh, so these are kind of like limited in use. Gotcha. All right, we'll give her some ability powers so that she hits harder. And then we've got five damage going out right there. Ten damage crit for the kill. Very nice. Yeah, I'm going to say to go ahead and provoke him if you can. And then obviously we got to send in the Tog so that he can use a little Raptor Claw on the enemy right there, dude. Like, you can't just have, like, you can't have a fat little Pitbull Velociraptor unless it's actually going to, like, fulfill that goal inside the party, you know? Who's he hitting? He's hitting my sniper again. All right, let's just go all DPS on this guy. So he's only going to deal one damage now. What does the boomerang do? Yeah. Eight damage right there. It seems like you crit fairly frequently. And so down goes our first batch of enemies. Given the tools that we were given, like I feel like we did a pretty good job just sort of like weaseling that one out. So he's got Rampart. You can give two to three shields to an ally row. That sounds really good. We got Protecto Bot. You can put down a robot with seven health and two, three attack damage and plus one damage against robots. You skip your next turn. Ability power will affect the robot's health. We've also got Combo Attack. I like these two right here. So both of these have utility. In the second case with the robot, I feel like that has the chance to draw fire off the main characters. And since the game is over if they die, like, that's a good idea. Like, any damage we can spread out to a temporary robot that we're summoning every single fight is going to stop that sort of roguelite attrition from building up over time. And believe me, we took some attrition on that last one. Uh, the Rampart is a really, really nice reactive ability that allows me to shield people up. Uh, but it assumes that all of the attacks are going to be going to a similar row. And so there are going to be times when we take that that we won't be able to get shields on who we want to shield or the damage will just be too spread thin, so on and so forth. I think I'm going to go with the Protectabot. Turns out they were hunting a party and they came home to their wives, or carrying game home to their wives, husbands, and children most likely, and pet lizards, and the baby mammocks with cute tiny hooves. Maybe they had a reason to be territorial after all. Well, I mean, we got some free food. Maybe they did. All right. And there's a camp over here. We can spend our Zin creds to upgrade skills and get battle levels, or we can go through the wasteland. It looks like there's a shelter right there. Ooh, I want to train, but I also want the shelter. Yeah, let's go to the shelter. Like, we took a little bit of damage from that last event that I'm not happy with. As you walk along a narrow road winding through a very unpleasant bushery, someone hails you. Oi! It ain't free passing through our lands. Bandits, and they want a toll. They have that kind of accent and everything. Before anybody could do anything, Gomda sneers. Don't you oi me, pal. I'm not your pal, mate. I'm not your mate, bro. And we're not paying you a single Zin cred, and you should work on your accent. It's fake as shit. That one does it. The gang leader opens fire. Dude, I've had no agency in any of these events so far. All I want to do is have some agency, bro. Mmm, they're going to debuff me, huh? That's not nice. Maybe don't do that. Oh, I only dealt two damage. Feels bad. I'm not going to get the bonus damage right here either. I don't even know if we can kill her by the time it goes off. I'm going to try. But, like, I can't guarantee anything. Who's going to... The dog's going to attack her. All right, I'm going to lower his damage real fast. There we go. It looks like we're going to take the debuff no matter what we do. So, kind of no way out of it. We got smoke bombed. Now we have a pretty good chance of missing. Feels bad. Uh, oh, that's a lot of damage going out, dude. That's a lot, a lot of damage going out. Oh, man. Eight damage. Foof. I was gonna say, I think we've got like a 50 50 chance to hit right now. So chances are this is not gonna go so great. Uh, maybe pull the damage off him. And then, oh, his shield isn't up? Oh, never mind, not the shield, the Protecto bot. Oh, we have no space for it in our group because of the dog. Oh, weak, dude. So that's just like a, a that's just a dead ability? Oh, no. All right, well, at least we killed off one of them. We just have to, like, get through this. If we can get through this, we're all right. 
let's go ahead and we'll go ability power right there. I think it's a really good idea to get rid of her. Because it looks like he's going to buff himself. So... Oh, he berserks out. Gotcha. Yeah, I was going to say, that can actually be used, though, to redirect that to, like, characters that still have HP. As long as they go last, I feel like that'll work out okay. Is he still going to do that? Is the ability still on there? Oh, he is. Okay. All right. Well, let's move it around, then. Actually, I may have him attack last because he's got the most HP. Hey, there's a six damage crit right there. I think we might not actually have to worry about it. This man might die on this turn, assuming we don't miss our shots. There you go. We survived another one, and we get to go to the refuge now. So she leveled up to two. We've got claw through, lose a health, deal five damage to an enemy. Ability power affects it. We've got finishing blow, exhaust all of your abilities to deal four to five damage to an enemy. We've got counterattack, retaliate against the first enemy that targets you. Counterattack follows the enemy action and does seven damage. Okay. I mean, the counterattack seems all right. I guess I'll try that. Limping into the bushery, the gang leader cries something about you not getting away with this. As far as you can tell, getting away with this is exactly what you're about to do. Surely this won't have any lasting repercussions. I like the humor of the game. Like, the humor in the writing style is really working for me. This is a safe and comfortable place. You set up a glorious camp. It looks like the Vapor Festival has come early. All right, yeah, rest it up. Oh, my God, we got so much health back. Finally, a breather. Time to rest and let yourself unwind a little bit. Things are going to get worse, sure, but right now they're on the lesser side of worse. Okay, so we've got well rested over here. His name is Chomp. My Tog's name is Chomp, bro. There's no time like camping. Whatever insanity happened before and whatever ugliness awaits ahead, now you can close your stinging eyes. Nothing can take this brief moment of peace and respite from you. Little do you know that the bandits you've beaten are crawling nearby, planning revenge. You learn about the plan through the moments after the narrator has mentioned it, via a rather sharp stick flying to deliver the news directly to your brain, bypassing the skull. Fight back. <laughs> Alright, so we've got even more bandits to deal with. So he'll skip his turn if he takes four damage or more. There you go. Skip your turn, you little turd. Ow! Hey, 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 hey. Oh, wait. I only got to do, like, one attack? That's weird. That's odd. Okay. All right. Fair enough. I still... I think we have enough damage to where I can make both of the archers skip their turn. Oh, it has to be in one attack. That's a rip. Well. I was hoping maybe we'd fish out a crit or something, but I don't think it worked like that. Damn it, dude. You shot my dog right on the top of his head, man. Standards, practices, and decorum, sir. That's unfortunate. Um, yeah, I'll just kill him off. I mean, that's the biggest damage reduction I can get for the purposes of... Oh, you missed. Oh, no. I was going to say, that could be, like, one of the biggest damage reductions that I could probably do. Oh, she's got a dodge? I need to keep that in mind, too. She's got an ability that wipes out the next attack that tries to hit her. Well, that rest was completely and totally pointless. Uh, a question. Is the game going to habitually attack me when I haven't moved or done anything for the rest of the game? It's just, you know, a question arises. Came here to rest, get my HP back, and then I've been dragged into just like a never-ending slog of battles here surrounding my camp. And so I'm just like, um, how frequently is this planning on happening? So here's the problem. 
I can't hit him without redirecting a target on somebody else. So... I think we're just gonna have to have her dodge. Yeah, and then we'll go after him on this turn. Oh, she missed with the nuke, dude. We just got XCOM. That sucks. Yeah, lower his damage by a little bit, I guess. I mean, that's going to make the taunt totally pointless, but that's life. It's just the way that it goes. I do like the art style. Like, I think the characters look really cool, and they look really, really good. It sucks we missed that nuke. It's deeply upsetting that we missed that nuke. Hey, we got the crit right there, though. That'll work. Okay, so the game made up for it. See? See? Game made up for it. Hasn't abandoned us yet. So can I just, like, stay on the same spot and then, like, rest again? <laughs> I need to rest again. Uh, we've got a new ability available. We can get Finishing Blow. We can get Shield to the head. Null your shields to deal three, four damage to an enemy. Okay. And then Ambush. Retaliate against the first enemy targeting you. The counterattack follows the enemy action and deals two damage. They get life loss three. Okay, I'll probably go with the retaliation. You squash the bandits and loot the bodies, nimbly avoiding any kind of moral lesson about the price of humiliating anybody. I mean, to be fair, they threw a spear at my face first. Yeah, we're gonna have to rest again. Like, we don't really have a choice. I've been thinking, have you ever considered why we don't have any kind of centralized government? I think the local tribes would probably benefit from it. Are you serious? Do you remember the last sort of centralized government and what it did to us? They weren't nice people, sure, but look around. It's like we're living in a rubber age. People are plagued by the issues that have long been solved by technology. It's just that we're too fractured to recreate all that knowledge and rebuild civilization. What for? So that once again, a small pool of people can accumulate all the knowledge and set them upon the rest of us when the people flee the planet? Hasn't history taught you anything? Never give an inch of power over to you. Um, is this a political compass type situation? The authoritarian versus libertarian axis? Lovely. I love to discuss politics. Nothing goes, <laughs> nothing ever goes wrong when people discuss politics. Surely you both understand that there's no ultimate solution to your question and that different forms of government fit different societies depending on the specific issues that they need to tackle. I do, however, think to happen to have a manifesto that explains my view of the current society, but it's only 40 pages long. Now, which of you wants to read it first? <laughs> Gomda and Sarah are curiously unanimous. <laughs> Gamda is just the kind of person to overturn a random stone and find a hidden cache of food underneath. Must be from another group of scavengers. Later, you'll think if karma would balance itself out by an equally random stroke of bad luck. Now you ponder the real dilemma. Do you eat the old and likely spoiled food? Free food! But it's old and kind of rotten, and there's a good chance we'll get a disease. A free disease. Uh, who has investigation and knowledge? Nobody? Ah, uh, weak. Ray sorts through the food. It takes a while and looks okay, you guess? Uh, the guess is wrong. The belly ache comes in about a half an hour, and then the vomiting starts. The party belches out their breakfast and all kinds of new names for Ray. What a mess. Alright, well, I mean, at least he got better at investigation and knowledge. So that's good. As Ray scouts a nearby area to make camp, his foot falls through the ground clutched by teeth. It's a sandworm, and it's looking to attack. Uh, we could probably do athletics right there. It's not rocket science. You grab Ray and pull him back, just like the worm does. Success. Now, if it were rock science, you'd be screwed. Your people are pitifully short on rocket scientists these days. Hence your whole predicament. Look at that. We lo uh Uh-oh, the hunter worm wasn't alone. It's time to fight or become prey. Alright, um, it looks like they're going to deal all the damage in the entire world to... What do these guys do? Becomes invulnerable till the end of turn when it takes attack damage. If the target takes damage from the attack, they get life loss one. Okay. Uh, that definitely is not ideal. That they get like a shield when you hit them. And it still does it doesn't cancel their attack either. Oof. Okay. My hope was that it would cancel their attack. That's what I was, like, hoping for. Unfortunately, it did not work like that. 
Uh, we'll eliminate what damage we can where we can, I guess. So we kind of want to go for big new kits on these guys if we can. Bye, doggy. Definitely summon a death robot. I think we need a. Th th I think this qualifies as a situation wherein we may need a death robot. Uh, yeah, you do avoid contact, I guess. She's only gonna dodge the next attack, though. And then we'll put his retaliation on because he's about to get hit, so. Oh, she still gets to do other stuff? Oh. Yeah, I guess do counterattack, too. Alright, sounds good. Ooh, nine damage right there. Very nice. Okay, so gr oh, she's down. Feels bad. I do like how there's different animations for people being up and then down. I like how they've got the impact down. Like, I see so many games where they don't animate any of this. They just make, like, a slash go across and, like, the health values adjust. And it's, like, refreshing to see a game that really locked in on kind of Darkest Dungeon. And what made Darkest Dungeon's combat so satisfying, i.e., that's sort of like the slight zoom-ins, the slight pan-ins, the flash frames and the freeze frames when the attack hits combined with sort of a clunky sound effect makes it feel as though the attack went through in a very heavy, weighty, and satisfying way. And I think this game's actually got that locked down. There's one down. I have my doubts if we're going to live through this, though. Uh, death Robot? Shoot a missile at somebody. I like missiles. Wow, these guys hit really, really hard. And, like, the fact that you have to kind of whittle them down. I need to refresh his abilities. I don't want to do that taunt, but I need to refresh all of his stuff. Oh, you can't encourage a robot? That's kind of a feels-bad type situation. I would love to encourage a robot. I'd be, like, best friends with my robot. Me and my robot would be like homies, dude. I just tr I would treat him like a little steel dog, dude. I treat him like a like a little aluminum hound. So he's gonna attack the robot next. I'm okay with that, actually. I guess I can't really do anything right there. Oh, I like how, you see how the robot, he has little check marks on his little fuselage for all of his kills. <laughs> That's kind of cool. It's like one of those small details, I think. There we go. Kill that thing off, man. We are wrecked right now. Chomp is dead. Sarah loses her pet and morale. The creatures burrow back into the ground, and they'd rather look for easier prey. You manage to finish some off before they disappear, and that's going to be your dinner. All right, well, on the plus side... I don't mind losing Chomp altogether that much because I think the robot is better than Chomp. Because, like, we don't lose morale when the robot dies. It deals more damage than Chomp did. Like, all around, it just feels like I got one of my abilities back. And so as much as I loved my little Pitbull Raptor, at the same time, the robot has a missile launcher. And, and so I, I feel like that's sort of like you can't compare a Pitbull to a rocket launcher. You know what I mean? It's just like, eh, those things are non-copacetic. Uh, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we were checking out Ragtag Crew. Tomorrow it will likely be something else. I'll see y'all later. Thank you for stopping on in. Hi, do, and take care, everybody.